Welcome to the Sent and Bent podcast. This is the first episode of the new year. So we're going to talk about our goals for this coming year, kind of catch up on the last couple of weeks because we took some time off for the holidays and uh, just tell, you know, like we do every podcast, our best stories of the week. And I want to start off setting something up for Will here. He had us dying laughing yesterday. <laughs> huh? Because Yes, you did. How so? Because there's this Instagram trend going around where this blonde girl does like oh. her hands across nice exotic sports cars and says the name of the car. And yes. so she goes like, Mercedes. And it's Except so she says it, Mercedes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Ethan does it perfectly. He really does. We need Mercedes. Ethan to get on this trend. <laughs> yeah, we, we do. I'll yeah. do it. Monster job. <laughs> <laughs> It needs to be something yeah. that has an actual name. It's not as funny if it's like... Uh, yeah. Uh, huh. Anyway. The Ethan. Uh, no, no, no. That would be funny. The K-Truck. Mitsubishi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Ethan has a, a bunch of swindling voice. I gotta, I gotta figure that's out that's how to like say Mitsubishi weirdly. Yeah. I, know, I think you did perfect. Yeah, that was guy. pretty nice. Yeah. Mitsubishi. <laughs> uh, so basically, we hopped on this trend with our Chang Li, which is our little red Chinese car we did the 100-mile challenge in. And it is... At this point, the roof is coming off. The welds are coming off the roof. Uh, mm -hmm. We've rolled it, lit it on fire. Like it's <laughs> Multiple just, times. So we've lit it on fire multiple times. It's the highest contrast you could think of to a luxury G-Wagon. So Will did this, and it was so funny. He did Chang Lee on everything, had a different thing as a microphone every time. And it went kind of viral, and then I'll let Will it take it from have. here with the recent events from the virality <laughs> yeah. of this Instagram it post. It must have become a little bit viral. I haven't paid attention to that post, but uh, I was filling up at the gas station uh, a couple days ago, and I walked in, and I was just going to get gas and my coffee, and the clerk is like, before I even get up there, to to the clerk, he's like, Chang <laughs> <laughs> and it caught me off guard. It really caught me off guard because I was done with work and I'm just going home and doing my thing. I do. I go to that gas station like every day, see that guy every day. And then this time he's just like, Chang Lee. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty amazing, honestly. Has this guy ever talked to you no, about Grindhard never said, stuff? He's never said anything about the channel. I'm always wearing a Grindhard shirt. He's never called it out or anything. And this time he's just looked me dead in the eye and he's like, Chang Lee. Just Chang like how Lee. I said it. I was like, <laughs> what? No, I guess I think, that Chang Lee just hit differently, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it hit a different audience than our normal audience. Like someone came up to me at the gym and they were like, hey, that... That Chang Lee thing you made, it was so funny. And I was like, oh, did you see the 100 mile challenge? And they were like, what? Oh, like, no, the thing with the blonde girl. And I was like, oh, like yeah. it hit like a different level of attention. I just think it's like, just comedy that anyone can understand. Yeah. yeah but kind don't. of at the same time, not understand because like, <laughs> there is they no understanding. See that little <laughs> car and they're like, what is the Chang Lee? Like, I mean, I mean, there's no understanding even the original that we were imitating. Yeah. Let alone the it's, one that we made. It's it, just, it's nonsensical. It doesn't make, it, the, 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 you can't understand it even if you try. Yeah. yeah. I have a theory though, because I went to their Instagram account, the original poster and they have a bunch of different luxury exotic vehicles like this, but they're all like redone hot pink interior, like crazy stuff. Like every single thing on these cars have been touched. I'm thinking probably <laughs> some touched by some guys. random blonde girl <laughs> going tick, 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 tick yeah. their fingernails or stroking the dashboard. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Literally been touched. Yeah. So I think it's some wealthy individual who has this crazy collection and just hires models to make content about his car collection. They're not selling uh, anything. Right. They're not promoting brands. Like obviously Mercedes was probably rolling in their grave seeing this video <laughs> go viral. <laughs> so like, <laughs> yeah, I think it has to just be a vanity project. Yeah. Because like they're not, they're also not posting enough or getting enough views to be like making money on it. Yeah. Not, not the kind of money you need to have yeah. like 30 supercars. Yeah. All the views are from people doing like what we did. Yeah. Well, 
Yeah, and it seems like it's probably not in this country either. It's like Russian or something like that girl. Yeah, the, the, she's all of them. Yeah, she's all of them. And all of them seem, models. you know, yeah. foreign. So, like, I mean, who knows? Maybe that guy is somehow promoting something we just don't understand in Russia. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> who knows? Yeah. But, yeah, uh, that's, yeah. A, that's a solid theory. Yeah. Though. The, the plot thickens because I was genuinely curious, especially oh. after, like, oh. our video did so well. I was like, there is something going on here. So I found the main model that's on their Instagram mainly doing this. Mm -hmm. She has a YouTube channel and she started like Twitch streaming gaming under the name Mercedes girl. What? <laughs> huh? You did yeah. dig deep into this. So man. she like games and stuff, but like, I think she was like a regular model, you know, like we'll pay you to do this gig. Mm -hmm. You do the gig, regular model. And then I think this video went so viral and so many people were Googling Mercedes girl that she was like, okay, I'm a professional YouTuber now slash Twitch streamer. <laughs> oh I'm just going to lean into this and roll yeah, with it. Yeah, exactly. I saw, and it's all so cringe. Oof. I think she understands her brand and does it on purpose. She must be. Probably. Because she did this whole video with one of her friends, like, ASMR trying food for the first time. What? What? How do you mix trying. those two things? All of the food is pink. What? And they're huh? on this table, like picking up the wrapper, like crinkling the wrapper in the microphone, whispering, like, oh, this smells so good. This smells so good. And like eating it. <laughs> and it's 35 minutes long. Did you watch it? Oh. I think I would know. Hey. I scrolled through. Oh. I think I would end up in a coma if I had to watch that. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, pink that, food. Like, what, it's all cake? pink or uh, like spray painted in pink. Like what is going like on there? Pretzels from Japan that are like covered in oh. pink chocolate, uh, mochi, mm. uh, like fruit loops, with just the pink ones, that kind of thing. <laughs> ah. Yeah. It was very like on brand for the Mercedes video. Like she knew what she was doing. She's like, I'm going to take the people Googling me because of the Mercedes video and do some Weird pink cringe ASMR or something. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, that's not all that uh, dissimilar to the beginning of Grindhard because we built the Barbie <laughs> car as a joke and then we're like, well, I guess people really like pink power wheels that go fast and we just built a whole bunch more of them. <laughs> yeah, now we have a fleet on this side yeah. of the garage. Yeah. That was never the intention when we started yeah. out. We weren't like, we're going to get together and build the world's fastest power wheels toys we we're like let's build some fun stuff and then build real cars nah yeah, yeah. you know it, it, it happens <laughs> and it was strategic in the beginning the pink part of it yeah because it's it's more funny right like, of course if it's a high horsepower situation it's a little pink car it's funnier but right. then like things like the jet boat if we didn't already have that as part of the brand we probably, probably. wouldn't have made that pink no but yeah it being pink makes it so much, oh, better. So much better yeah, yeah. it's yep. just Maybe Just we need to collaborate with this Mercedes girl. <laughs> oh. Can you imagine? That would Get be her to nice. do that with the Barbie camper. <laughs> yeah, it's she'd like, say Barbie in some like weird way, like she says uh, Mercedes. Barbie. She could like crinkle the peeled wrap on the jet boat. <laughs> Power wheels. <laughs> Fisher oh. Price. Yeah, Fisher Price. Oh, it's even oh, worse. I can it's imagine children. it. Oh, children Fisher toy price. names. <laughs> Oh, man. What's the... Mattel. <laughs> Dream camper. <laughs> wow. We should send her a DM. We should. We really should. Can <laughs> like, you imagine? When are you going to be in the States next? We need to collab. Yeah, but then but she'll see the like, videos of us making fun of her. Trying I don't think she'll yeah. care. She must embrace it. Yeah. Like, you know, I think that's... To become a meme, uh, it was either Vice or Vox did this series on, like, after the meme, have you guys seen? I've this? seen that series. It's no, great. I haven't. It's like if you're a kid and like you get like memed, and then they find the person from the super famous meme. Like they right. found the guy who like rage quit in his cubicle and smashed his keyboard. <laughs> Remember <laughs> that? <laughs> yeah. They like found that guy and they're like, "What happened that day?" And he's like, "Oh, I was just so fed up with work and I didn't think of the security cameras and just rage quit." You know? Yeah. And then like. He was doing all right. Like, he wasn't, like, the happiest guy in the world, but, you know. They the, never are. That's the weird thing. It's like the meme takes something from them yeah. when it becomes a meme. Yeah, it's I think because if you do it on purpose, like, we tried to make a viral YouTube video. So when we got it, we were, like, excited. 
But if all these people <laughs> just shared the security camera footage of you like doing kind of a bad thing at work, then it's like, yeah, that must kind of take yeah. something from Take you. something. It's, yeah, we're gonna go viral a, with this one. <laughs> oh <Yeah>. no! <laughs> like that guy, he was trying to go viral. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. Oh. And he went viral <laughs> to an extent. Uh, and then the it's Wednesday, my dudes guy. He has a whole like kind of comedy reactions channel, but for the longest time, every single Wednesday he made a new it's Wednesday, my dudes. I've never heard of this. Really? Guy. It's, oh, <laughs> he's big in my generation. <laughs> yeah, I heard it's Wednesday, my dudes, like a billion times yeah. in middle school. Uh, he's like, he was a kid and it was Vine. It was mm-hmm. like really before YouTube. And he has like a green shirt, I think, kind of long hair, but he has like suntan. You know, like when you, the goggles you wear mm-hmm. when you go into yeah, your tanning tan. bed. Yeah. And he goes, it's Wednesday, my dudes. Ah! <laughs> like that kind of. It's funny when you see it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's like kind of around the same era of it's a slithery yeah. little snake. Yeah, it was like yeah. that part of Vine, that mm-hmm. era is what it yeah. came from. I missed Vines entirely. That it man was... turned it into a full on career. Wow. Like very successful. Yeah. Impressive. But I remember, I remember hearing um, like probably before I even really knew like anything about the internet or YouTube. Um, I remember hearing an NPR special about uh, uh, this guy who had um, gone viral for something. I don't remember what it was, but it was some funny little clip. Back when like that was the only way to go viral was random funny clips. Before yeah. there was like channels. Yeah, yeah. random and, junk. <laughs> and it was, yeah, when it was an NPR special about like how to, like how that guy took that one viral video and turned it into like a business and made money and stuff. And like, you know, he was talking about all the same stuff we do now, but differently. Because back then you couldn't make money off of the videos yeah. so he's like yeah and then you brand it you put your meme on shirts and all of that kind of stuff <laughs> but i mean this is probably like 20 years ago but yeah <laughs> that's really cool there's this guy travis that i actually did a job for he had the mega mega viral video like early youtube of his wife is driving and he's saying okay so if we're going 60 miles an hour and we're 60 miles away how long will it take to get there <laughs> And she like starts doing math and she's like, uh, like 47 miles. <laughs> like, it's just like one of those straightforward, like yeah. things that just a genuine moment, right. you know? And he also like that video went so viral. He got hit up by all the licensing companies. He right. didn't really know anything about that world, but he learned so much through that process of like licensing his video and making money. And then he started like selling viral videos to brands kind of and like, huh being like a viral marketing company. Right. And one of my first jobs was editing, a, making like a custom dubstep. It was like dubstep was bumping, Skrillex. <laughs> this is the era. So I made a custom dubstep song for that video because at the time there weren't any websites that were licensing songs for YouTube. Mm, so he right. found my music and he was like, just make me a song for the video and then don't release it anywhere else. So I can right. get money from the video. Yeah. Like that's how hard it used to be back then. Right. It was S- like, speaking of dubstep, I was in the shop after you guys all left last night working on the lathe and my Apple music decided that I wanted to listen to dubstep. So. Oh, nice. Oh, but I mean, nice. it's not a bad thing to rock out to. That's what you want. <laughs> working on the lathe. Just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The lathe is actually a very dubstep machine. It does make <laughs> dubstep noises. Like, especially when you're using the parting tool, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trends move so fast. Like, when's oh, the last yeah. time you even heard the word dubstep? I don't uh, know. It's like not from us. Oh, <laughs> do you guys? Yeah. Do you guys remember the um, what does the fox say? Video. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Have you ever watched more of their videos? Stonehenge. No. They they have one that's d- all about. We need to watch it later. The Remind me after you the podcast. Seen that, the dubstep no. one is oh. amazing. Oh, really? we gotta watch that. It's at so good. They have a whole. Like, what does the Fox say music video, except it's the same guys, but the whole really? song's about dubstep. They really brought the production value on Dude, the what they, they did. What is, say? That and, was and they nice. did on this other one, too. The production value is just as good. Maybe really? better. Really? Yeah. Really. That's Stonehenge like, is really good, too. Is that the one where he falls in love with the seal? Is that the dubstep song, or is that a different I one? don't know. I, I binged that guy's stuff years ago. So did I. I think uh, we might have done that together. I, I was <laughs> like... <laughs> That was like 2013 when the, those videos. Uh, yeah, it was. Yep. That Around was like that the new generation of Weird Al, I feel. 
like kind of, Weird Al had like, a great idea and a lot of people tried to copy it, but no one really took off. Right. And then these guys were like, what if it's like a whole band and like, we're not making f- like parodying songs. It's our own songs, but the songs are just hilarious. Yeah. Right. But I don't, I haven't heard anything about those guys in years. So like, I don't know if they were, they huh. definitely weren't as successful as Weird Al. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> clearly, if you guys haven't heard their dubstep song, they're no. Near. I've definitely yeah. heard What's the Fox Say though, <laughs> because that was yeah, popular was the, in middle school. What was the name of it? Was it like Yelvis or something? It was like some. Y- yeah, I think York, it's Yelvis. Yelvis. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Anyway, that was good a stuff. good, a good trend. If you haven't seen or heard it. Go go look up their stuff. Not just the what does the fox say. I mean, probably everyone's heard that. But like, the the rest of them are also really good. There's gonna be someone listening to this podcast that's like, I haven't heard of any of this stuff. They're about to look up the the Instagram Actually, a, girl. The what does the fox say? They're like, wow, uh, these guys really take in some trash <laughs> level let's, content. Let's be honest. It's not gonna be one person. It's probably most of them. <laughs> <laughs> they are, they got to look up Hershey Wood too while they're at it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hershey Wood has a good yeah. dog. Shoots a good dog. Shoots Shoot a good yeah. dog. That one's not even that viral. Like I don't even like it has like a quarter million views. No, that one deserves more views. It though. really. I've does. showed so many people yeah. that. Dude, should, I was showing someone that d- video. D- d- we got to put yeah, out a warning though. Have like to. it's not. It's it's very disturbing. It's not yeah. like gore. In a good no way. one gets hurt, but it's like yeah. you. It well, could make you uncomfortable. Before Will tells his story, I'll tell you what the video is. Uh, this uh, man, really, you're gonna spoil it? Well, give them we the, need gist. the premise. Otherwise, they're not gonna That's understand true. anything we true. talk about yeah. from here on out. Yeah. <laughs> this man <laughs> is in a trailer park, and he inhales whole hot dogs and then launches them like quite far out of his esophagus. Yeah, I. I don't understand and the physics of it, but yeah. Even after he swallows a few, he can still talk, which I don't understand the physics of how that works. I, I don't know. This don't man know. just has like, he goes, <laughs> <laughs> like he can Five. launch one at a time. He can launch them all at the same time, like a <laughs> shotgun. And he's just really funny and you yeah. have to watch it. There you go. Carry yeah. on. Well, along the same lines, I don't know if I've told you this Yet, but I think I told Steven I was at a party and I was showing people Hershey Wood. And, nice. I, and they were like, wow, that's really cool. And then Katie's like, we have a friend that can do that. And I <laughs> was like, no. And I was like, huh? And I didn't believe her at first. Can and we she, have him on the show? Yeah, I asked him and he's down. And <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I didn't believe her. And then he, she texts him and he sends like eight videos. <laughs> the longest hot dog this man is able to put in his mouth and still talk is one of those really long Costco sausages that are like 12 inches long. I don't want to know where he learned this skill. But he can also put like 12 of these little hot dogs down his throat and like shoot them out like a machine gun. Like a machine gun. Wow. Yeah, he's very talented. Why is this a skill that people have? I don't know. How do you learn you can do this? I Uh, don't don't ask. Don't ask that question. But maybe it's like a... uh, like a sword swallowing. Maybe it's like the same technique. I'm sure it is. Yeah. But I think there's breathing techniques that go along with it. Because everyone, like, <laughs> he does the same different. thing. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, they couldn't, they couldn't possibly be going down your. Where does it go? Well, they're not going down the passage to your lungs. Because then you couldn't breathe. Yeah. So they're going, like, I think you're using. I'm, I'm thinking about this. And I'm thinking you're using your lungs to create the suction. suction. But Aww. then they're going they actually, like you said, down your, your esophagus stomach. toward your stomach. But if you also inhale enough air, like if you're trying to burp, you know, then you could also force burp and push them back out with the same air that's in your stomach while not affecting your ability to breathe or talk because they'd be in your esophagus, <laughs> not in your yeah. windpipe. And that's my theory. Bypass the gag reflex. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously yeah, you, yeah, have you have to. to. It's like the same, <laughs> I guess it's like, I don't know how sword swallowers like train like do you start with like a small sword i would assume you start with something that's not sharp <laughs> oh, that's probably a good like maybe a hot a, dog yeah, maybe like a hot train dog with hot dogs worst case scenario you just eat a hot dog a whole hot dog <laughs> or choke on a hot dog i mean <laughs> but sword, oh this conversation is getting really do weird sword swallowers <laughs> hold their breath while they do it or can they no, breathe while because it's, in it's there? not in, it's not going down the like a sword also is like you know, relatively two dimensional, so it's not blocking yeah. the whole passage. But also, it's not going into your lungs; it's going into your stomach. Hey, I mean, not all the way, but towards hey. your stomach. Wow, oh man, 
Okay, well, uh, we should really talk about guys, something else. How was your guys' New Year's? I haven't heard Steven's yet. Oh, mine was super chill. It was very responsible. I just played piano until midnight and then went to bed. Is that the same day that you accidentally drank non-alcoholic beer? Yeah. yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, I'm doing dry January or I'm, you know, working on dry January. Uh, so you have, uh, so wait, so that hasn't January started then. yet. I had two beers last night. That's not okay, dry that's January. Not dry yeah. January. Yeah, well, it's starting now. I don't have any left at my house. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where was I at this? I don't know. Fake beers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was like prepared, you know, I'm like, well, I can, you know, have a few beers on New Year's Eve relax, have a good time. And then I didn't realize till the next day when I like looked, I'm like, oh, these are non-alcoholic. <laughs> yeah. The best part say... is he bought them. It wasn't like oh, somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like they were in a fridge and he was just like, oh, I'll have this beer. No, he went to the store and bought non-alcoholic IPAs. <laughs> they were actually really notice. good. Is that when you decided you were like, okay. I no, I decided January. before that. I was like, well, New Year's Eve, like one more little party send, you know. I was actually going to meet up with Will and then that never happened. Yeah. Yeah. What'd you do? Uh, I just had a whole bunch of people in my little apartment. It was like <laughs> a little party there, you know, and you know, you know how it is. Like one person will invite someone and then one person will invite three people and then yeah. just kind of, and my apartment's a studio apartment. So it was like kind of <laughs> like <laughs> elbow to elbow. Bumping? Was it like two? Yeah, it was kind of bumping. Yeah. We had Fortnite on the projector and nice. Fortnite tournaments and stuff, but yeah, it was a pretty, pretty and chill I wish I'd been here for New Year's. We could have had a mean shop party. For oh, New yeah. Year's, yeah. Which would nice. have also been a two mil sub celebration party. But oh, yeah. We haven't we mentioned still haven't that done on the pod yeah. yet. Yeah. We were <clears throat> all signs pointed to it happening like three months from now. But the 100 mile challenge video went viral. The chopper video went viral. And then a, a bunch of real, shorts. Yeah. A reel and a short. It was the same video that Steven made went like super viral. Mm -hmm. And so it just went. Joop. It was yeah. awesome. We got so. 140,000 subscribers in a month. Yeah, it was super <laughs> duper cool. So and we hit it on Christmas Day, didn't we? Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. It was really cool. Yeah. So I was, yeah, yeah. I was on, in a, on a plane on the way to Texas oh. on Christmas Day to go visit my wife because she's stationed in El Paso. So that's what I did for Christmas and New Year's is I sat around in El Paso on night shift because she's a nurse in, in the army and... Uh, she was working nights, so I stayed up all night playing video games while she was working, and then... Um, Did you stay up until the new year? No, on New Year's oh. Eve. I <laughs> really? Well, because I, f I was flying home on New Year's Day, and oh. I didn't want to be fully on night shift when yeah. I got home. Yeah. So I only stayed up till like, 11, and then I went to bed. She stayed up until... Because <coughs> I, I, I also had to get up early to go to the airport, so she stayed up until, like... Well, she took me to the airport at, like, 3.30, 4 in the morning. Um, and then... Uh, yeah, so that my, my New Year's Eve was very uneventful. I mean, we cooked a nice dinner and had a good time, but it yeah. wasn't uh, it wasn't a party. Is it harder to be away when you have something like the Monster Chopper that's like a thing that like is ready to go, like just needs some more attention to just work, you know? Um, it's not really specific to the project. Um, it is harder now that the shop is done and it's like way nicer to work in here. Yeah. Because yeah. just in general, like like last winter when I left for a week, it was like, wow, it's really nice to be warm, not be cold. Yeah. <laughs> and so like, I mean, I always miss the like building and hanging out with you guys and all of that part of it. But like now that the shop, like, Aw. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> but uh, the, um, the shop helps a lot because like it's pleasant to work now not just like enjoyable the work itself it's a pleasant environment and we can all be in here and like you know most nights when you guys leave i stay out here and work a couple extra hours not because i feel like i have to but because it's it's nice pleasant i can put the music on and it's warm and like mm -hmm. you know i don't have anywhere else to be but um but yeah it's every time i go there it's harder to like el paso is just i mean i'm sorry if you live there and love it but for me it's the most boring place i've ever had to spend time especially when you're on night shift because nothing's really open. There's not much to do. So, like, it it's great to go there and see my wife, which, fortunately, she'll be moving home in, like, five months. So that's oh, that's exciting. Months. But, oh. um, but uh, the hardest part for me is just going from, like, being busy, like, 12 hours a day, seven days a week, if I want to be, which I usually do, <laughs> <laughs> to having nothing to do for 12 hours a day for seven days a week. It's a very abrupt change and it's very difficult. Like I, uh, I was, I saw some clip from some random podcast. I have no idea what it was, but this guy was talking about 
uh, I don't know, psychology or something. And he was like, when, uh, when you're addicted to being busy, relaxation feels like stress. Yeah. And that was the most accurate thing I've ever heard for myself. I was like that he's talking about me and it, it's true. Like I, if I have to sit and relax for a whole day, I get stressed the hell out. <laughs> Cause yeah. I'm just so used yeah. to being busy all the time. I but. feel like that too. It's, I hit phases whenever I take time off. Like the only time more than a week last year was, uh, when I went to Italy mm-hmm. and it was like, The first few days, I was like, wow, I want to, like, you know, work on something. Like, I want to, like, make a video, edit the podcast. Like, it's just so much fun doing that, like, creative stuff for me. Yep. And then, like, a weekend, I'm like, okay, well, I don't have any of that stuff to do. What am I going to do? And then I start getting other ideas. Yep. I'm like, I should start a YouTube channel where like you walk <laughs> around the beach slowly and then you put it in reverse and just put like trippy hop music to it and stuff. <laughs> and like, I just invent YouTube yep. channels yeah. the entire time I'm gone. When I went to uh, Hawaii to help Stetson out last yeah. year, same thing. Yep. I was like writing down ideas, like 10 new YouTube channels. It's like my vice. Yeah. It's like if that's, <laughs> that's exactly the same thing I do. It's just slightly different because I'm not, I mean, it's, you know, I'm doing my side of that. So I'm always yeah. thinking like, what could I build? Or like, well, this time when I was in Texas, I thought up the, the, um, the really cheap snowmobile hundred mile challenge idea. Cause I was bored and like, yeah, my other vice is Facebook marketplace because when I have, <laughs> well, it's yeah. perfect because when I have nothing to do and I want to feel productive, but I, I like, I'm either too tired to actually work on something or like I'm in an airplane or Texas. Like if I browse marketplace, I feel like I'm being productive. Cause I'm like, Hmm, maybe I could. F-. And so yeah. I found this guy selling by accident. I found this guy selling 10 Yamaha phasers for like 1200 bucks. Some of them are obviously parts. And I got really excited about it, but then he'd already sold half of them anyway. That's that's so I do the yeah. exact same thing. Like I just sit there thinking up like, Hmm, what could I build? I could do this. And then I could oh, build yeah. that. And I could, yeah, it's yeah. a real thing. <clears throat> yeah. I think that it's, you just get in such a, a loop or whatever, yep. which I think is kind of why, like I listen to all the YouTuber podcasts and all the YouTubers who have podcasts mm-hmm. and all the time, I feel like they're talking about burnout, but I don't know about you guys, but I don't really experience that. I like maybe experience the opposite. Like I definitely feel the like pressure to have right. to like make the next video better the next week. And like, that's a lot of pressure, like the burnout side of it. I'm like, it's just so much fun. It's like kind of like taking a vacation is like guaranteeing for that week you're not going to do something fun like the 100 mile yeah. challenge <laughs> or a limo trip. Yep. Like, like I'd way rather do that than like go to Mexico and surf for a week. Yep. Yeah, yeah I don't for know. Sure. So I don't I, have uh, burnout because of that. I mean, My I eyes um, hurt sometimes from editing so long. <laughs> yeah. but that's about it. I was feeling the burnout for probably, I don't know, the last couple of years. But uh, then I got on antidepressants and realized I wasn't burnt out. I was just depressed um, <laughs> because <laughs> that's how my brain works. Um, mm. And now that I, yeah, now that I'm not depressed, like I don't really feel burnt out at all because I have the mental energy to be interested in the stuff and to, and to enjoy it in a way that I wasn't for a while. I mean, like that's an exaggeration. Like I was still enjoying everything we do, but it felt like, like just less. And I was spending more time worrying about the stuff that, you know, like you said, all the pressure to keep doing. Like I just spent more time thinking about the negative side of things than the positive. The positive was always still there, mm. but the antidepressants mm-hmm. helped like switch that around so I can just think more about the positive stuff and not the negative stuff as much. Like, yeah, that's that's yeah. how I describe it anyway. It but, makes a lot of sense. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do really understand why most people that do this are burnt out. Like it is like a you know, stressful. And also I think a lot of people don't necessarily do things as much the way they want to do them or what they actually want to do as we do. You know, I think, I think we've been, uh, lucky slash, you know, done a good job of creating ourselves a niche that we actually want to be in and doing things we actually want to do. Like, and, and another huge factor, I think for a lot of YouTubers is that like, um, I mean, it's certainly a lot of the people in the automotive space, like don't have the situation that we do where they have one person that builds and one that edits that are both passionate about their individual skill set. Most people it's like 
they're just the they're Not one person me. and they build and edit. Yeah. And then sometimes they hire an editor and whatever, but like it, that would cause a lot more burnout. Cause if you're not really, if you're only kind of like sort of into the editing, that's, I could imagine that being a huge part of the burnout for most people is like having to do both sides. Yeah. And I think for most people too, like we are very niched up and like, you know, there are channels that are like people really passionate about Legos that just right. do Legos. People really passionate about music that just do music. Right. And those are like the best channels. Yep. But what's popular right now is just being, a YouTuber, right? Like you yeah. just want to be a YouTuber. And then the things you're doing, I guess could be fun, but it's like weird challenges. Like I went to every fast food in my entire state. Yeah. Like, like how is that fun? Pointless <laughs> things. And it's like, if you need to do that every week, right? Oh man, the burnout, the burnout would be so real. Yeah. And I right. think that's the huge difference. Like, you know, you were already doing stuff like this in your free time. Right. I was, <laughs> doing yeah, you stuff were, like yeah. this in my free time and work and right all the time yeah so, i mean sleep. same like that's yeah <laughs> so it's like yeah it's i think that makes it a lot easier and like you know i i like watching like some of these crazy challenge videos that people come up with but to do that every week would be just like hardcore yeah. right yeah well and yeah, just coming up with ideas like how do you yeah. top you know every fast food restaurant in your state yeah. i mean we you're like <laughs> yeah yeah how do you talk yeah exactly and you essentially out. have to just be doing what's popular at the time like it could be something you're not into at yeah. all right and you're like oh i need to learn Fortnite. oh <laughs> man i have to go to every restaurant in my state like <laughs> that is kind of stressful oh yeah. yeah well there's this guy who i follow i really he's really good at like storytelling and making these videos he did i ate taco bell for every meal for a month so it was like super size me i saw that but taco bell and it took off it went hard he was on the news and like he like did it right like he had like the health people like take his blood <laughs> Doctors, the health not people. health people <laughs> take his blood. Like a nutritionist, a doctor, uh, one of those types of people. And by the end of it, he even got to interview, like on day 28 or whatever, he interviewed the girl who does the recipes for Taco Bell. Huh? That's hilarious. There's a this girl is, that just does the recipes Well, I mean, there's got to be somebody. Yeah. Uh -huh. Or She's a team of people, of probably. Like of She's wow. probably in charge of a team. But, yeah, they... Uh, he actually was healthier than you would think. Just in yeah. the beginning, his sodium like went way oh, too right. high. So he just got the less salty foods and he felt kind of bad, but he survived and he didn't do any like permanent damage to his body. Yeah, I, I was remember surprised. I, didn't I think remember he could do the it. outcome being a lot better than I was expecting. Yeah. Well, from what I understand, or I, I think I heard somewhere that the super size me one was kind of like not scientific later, like later on, like the, like, because it, it showed, like, how unhealthy he got. Yeah. And somewhere I feel like I heard that it was, like, that was maybe exaggerated. Yeah. I can um, believe that. And, he and it, like, seemed kind of not very healthy to begin with. I, I don't I don't remember the details or anything. I just heard mm. somewhere that, like, that was, like, later on, like, years after that happened, people were like, wait a minute. Like, he wasn't really, I don't know, remember what it mm. was. But there was something that was, yeah. like, really exaggerated about that. I don't remember. Yeah. That's the hard part with what he did versus the Taco Bell man. He did the super size. Yeah, sodas that's part of the, every yeah. meal. That's part yeah. of it too. Is that like Taco he wasn't Bell just guy. eating McDonald's. He was intentionally eating the most, the most yeah. like the biggest you could. And I mean, I guess that is a point too. But nobody like yeah, yeah. Nobody does that if they don't want to. <laughs> yeah. You know, nobody's going around going. I guess I have to get yeah. the super size. Like yeah, uh, I've been right, seeing anyway. a big trend of people taking like kind of old school famous documentaries and like mm, and doing it themselves them. remaking them for which YouTube. is a huge testament to like how accessible information and equipment is right now that you even can do that that yeah. this man with his own camera and his own computer could make a video just as good as like the super size me documentary that had like a team of editors yeah. and all this stuff that's pretty crazy that you could just make a movie isn't there like a whole list of countries now that recognize dolphins as non-person people non what? non non, non, -human non human persons persons yeah wow. uh i think that started with india if i remember yeah. like 10 years ago or something so or they're people that aren't they, because, of their, because of their intelligence they recognize them as like like we recognize them as more conscious than a lot of other animals. Oh, yeah. so they're exactly. out of the animal range i mean they're so still animals they're just saying yeah. like they should be treated as a person yeah, Hitchhiker's yeah. Guide to the Galaxy was way ahead of its time. It really was. <laughs> it really was. Like, yeah. uh, 
what did you say about a mouse the other day? You're like, oh, mice don't know they're dumb. And oh like, yeah, right. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The mice in that movie. Yeah. So New Year's goals. Uh, as we could talk about personal ones too, but I was thinking grind hard ones, and definitely the one that I'm lit about right now, since we're just talking about it, is making a movie. We just bought a movie camera. A movie camera. It's our first cinema camera we've I've ever had and definitely has ever been involved with Grindhard. And so we got that going, an external monitor that can record raw. Basically, we have everything we need to make a movie now. It's very legitimate. And I mean, you guys just made your own little uh, jank movie with the uh, 100, 100 Mile, mile challenge. challenge. Yeah, which <laughs> that was kind of a test yeah. to see, like, can we do a single adventure and turn it into a movie? Right. Because with our other movie ideas, we've been wanting to do this for a very long time. I've mm -hmm. always wanted to make a movie. It's like, okay, we can't, like one of them was build 2K trucks and do this crazy cross the country thing. And right. It's like, all right, that's going to take so much time. We can't do that and, and also yeah. make YouTube videos. Right. So really a part of the hundred mile challenge that Will and I talked about a lot. It's like, all right, let's keep cameras running the entire time. And if we're editing it together and we can get like that feature length accolade, mm -hmm. then we could do a movie in like a short. Yeah. In like a week. Short I mean, cause time. you guys did, I mean, yeah, you could call it, that trip was roughly a week when you count in the, all the preparation Building that went into it and stuff. Time. But yeah, if we were doing a more serious version with all of us, then yeah. a week for the actual filming of the adventure and then maybe yeah. a week for, and then it's only like two weeks for that movie, which is, yeah. I mean, it's yeah, way it's more, more doable. manageable. Yeah. yeah. Editing will be crazy because of with raw and color correcting right. every single clip. Like it'll probably take months to edit, even if we do film it within a week or two or three, but you have help but editing some of the other videos now. So that exactly. helps a lot. So I think that is like my main goal for the year. And then nice. I also think we need to make a rock song with a music video. Nice. So yeah, that's we talked about it a awesome. lot last year, but I'm like, are you going to sample like shop sounds for yeah, some of it? I nice. already have. Yeah, I heard about yeah. that. You went around with a piece of metal banging on stuff. Oh, that was for the song. <laughs> I thought that was for. Like, I thought that well, was for the podcast. I'm going to do it. Use those samples for the podcast intro. Uh, mm. So it's kind of like the hundred mile challenge. Of ah, yeah, you're just kind of practicing. Yeah, because yeah, it's like I've obviously made songs with all kinds of samples before, but like. I'm sure there's going to be like certain ways to record the welder to actually make it sound like cool in a right. song. Cause I don't want it to just be like a song that happens to have a welder sound in it. Right. Yeah. I want it to be like, that's part of the instrumentation. And like, we have so many different tools that make so many different noises. Like I know. you could use the tubing bender, the, the sound yeah. of the electric hydraulic pump. Yeah. And then like, you know, yeah. the, the mill, uh -huh. the, the mill and the lathe can the make lathe. all sorts of different noises oh, yeah. too, depending on what you're, what like RPM and what, what kind material. of metal you're cutting? Yeah, bench yeah. grinders like that'd be really fun. The plasma, the, the arc droid has to be in there, cutting oh, the yeah. hexagon. For sure, you could record its like homing noise. Oh yeah, like, <laughs> that'd be awesome. Be yeah. Pretty cool. And yeah, then a like, bunch of engine noises from like our best sounding yeah. engines. Uh, you know how like thankfully the Grom is dead. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> we still have a couple of those <laughs> engines <laughs> around that make the same noises. <laughs> that <laughs> reel that you sent us yesterday, like this is Edwin with the Grom. Yeah. That's a whole. Th did you guys know that's a whole sport in Japan? Yeah, is just making engine noises with your motorcycle. Yeah. Like it it's a competition. Really? Yeah, yeah. The Hakuza was like a call sign of like which gang you were in or whatever. Yeah, and like you'd be on the streets doing that. Ding, 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 ding. And then it got into like a whole sport, and like people tune their bikes and mm -hmm. exhaust to hit certain notes, and like like you saw the crowd of people in that video. Oh yeah, it's actually like, a competition. Yeah, like wow. it's judged and very yeah. sad though because I've seen these people take like. S1000 double R's and they just like rip the thing all the way back and it's like blowing the baffles out of the exhaust and stuff. I'm like, they're just destroying like that a is, really nice street I'm bike. I'm going to fly there and take that motorcycle. <laughs> well, they're probably like rebuilding them all the time. Yeah, I guarantee. Yeah, their exhausts yeah. are like that, glowing red. That yeah. one I sent you guys last night was just one of the better ones. Like that guy was yeah. skilled with the throttle. Oh, yeah. The way he was like hitting different notes and different yeah. tempos and stuff. That was, mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway. It reminded me of this clip. Uh, there's this um, 
when Formula One cars went to fly by wire um, throttles, mm -hmm. they could like control them with the computers, you know? Right. And I think it's a Renault in a garage. They did like a national anthem or something. <laughs> oh, they just but tuned it to, yeah, yeah so that's like, hilarious. <laughs> it's like so cool. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. And it's, I mean, to do it with the computer is pretty cool, but to do it with your hand is like, very, very impressive. impressive. Very, yeah. Those fast revving engines just ding, 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 ding. But yeah, that's exactly what I like. Yep. <laughs> like my, <laughs> <rev -one engine. laughs> my favorite guy to watch on Instagram just goes into like a 12 o'clock wheelie on Groms and just rev bangs it, <laughs> like puts in the clutch. And it's like, it kind of has a little extra skill because if at any point you go like break it, too much, you can't put it back up because you're already at full throttle. So it's like, it's a pretty cool, like, for swag factor, and then mm -hmm. you're just being, like, really loud and obnoxious on a really small <laughs> bike, which is really That is your favorite thing. <laughs> yeah, Edwin sent me one of those videos, like, a couple months ago, and he's like, this is my favorite channel, man. And I just watch it, and he goes up, back up to a 12, and just <laughs> ring, 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 I'm like, oh, yeah. Edwin really likes his wheelies. And, and red limiters. I just encountered a clip of you riding over the long bridge on your little green bike, and you kind of come into frame. There's like these epic clouds in the background and you're just holding the wheelie and you're just going, whoa. <laughs> Every time Steven's like, hey, look at this clip, this clip I got of Edwin. I'm always expecting the whoa. <laughs> Which is funny because that started as an imitation of what you yeah, say. Yeah. A lot of the things we say are like <laughs> modified imitations of Will, but that one is really funny yeah. because like it was originally... Edwin, well, all of us, imitating Will going, whoa! <laughs> and then now it's just Edwin's thing, and now yeah. Edwin actually just goes around going, whoa! Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's so true. I can't <laughs> help myself. When I've, I've always been like that. There's little videos of me as, like, a tiny little kid. I had a, like, a, like a Power Wheels Harley thing. Mm -hmm. So it was, like, a three-wheeler. I was going, biker, 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 until my dad puts me on it, and then I get on it, and I'm like... <laughs> just going in circles on the bike. Oh my! And then nothing's when I changed. About wheelies. I was like wheelie, wheelie all the time. Like you still do. Used, yeah. <laughs> my dad used to put me on his tank and do wheelies, but I couldn't talk yet. Like I kind of talk. I was like two and a half or mm -hmm. whatever. But then, like when I started like talking and knowing about wheelies, like the the guys at the school would like lift up the front, and then someone would push me on like a. You know, like those little tricycle things. Yep. So, yeah. So that was nice. always doing wheelies. But that, yeah. That what reminds me of uh, Steven. Oh, I was with going back to like our like, whoa thing and stuff. Uh -huh. I, I realized that I talk in that weird accent that we talk in all the time now. <laughs> like when I tell stories for anyone and I had to explain it to this girl last night. She's like, what's that voice you make? I'm like, it's kind of me imitating Will, imitating other people. Yeah. And you do it the yeah. most. Like any yeah. uh, any of these things that we all pick up, like the reason that we have the premium merch is because Will like uh, legitimately just said premium in ways that normal people don't. Uh -huh. And then we all picked up on that and started saying it. But like, you know, just as an example, anytime we have any of our own personal memes, Stephen always says it oh, like 10 it. times more than everyone <laughs> yeah. else. It and takes him it, a little longer to catch on. And then he just, it's the yeah. only thing he says. There was a few that I was really hesitant on, like yeet. I was like, ah, oh, I don't really like that. And then all of a sudden I'm like, yeet, just, yeet, yeet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I've noticed the voice that you use, Stephen. You're like, cause if Will's described it on the podcast before, but he has different voices depending on what kind of conversation he's having. So if he's telling a story where he did something dumb, he's kind of like, well, it wasn't that dangerous. <laughs> and I was in Seattle <laughs> and this man was chasing me. Yep. And that I think is your impression of Will doing that yep. is how you tell yep. every single story. Yeah, it's now. the voice for any person in yeah. any story. And they say weird words too. Yeah, like, I even oh, this do that. man, he came up to me, he's all swindly, man. <laughs> and I use that voice now too. I'm like, I like yeah. just describing random stuff. Usually it's like talking about you guys doing stuff because yeah. but sometimes <laughs> even other people I'm just like, Whoa man, yeah, all this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize I had like a voice until I was out of the country and we met some people from the UK or something. And they immediately knew Katie was like from the U S Idaho or something. <laughs> and they're like, where are you from? And I was like the U S and they're like, 
you just sound very different. Like you have a, <laughs> See, you that's have totally different. Like, you just, like, you just sound very <laughs> different, man. My wife asked you, asked me where you grew up. Yeah, I was like, huh? <laughs> this you, is you like, talk in a unique way. Well, yeah. I always thought it was just the Idaho language. But. It's not. At all. <laughs> it's just your own thing, man. Your own thing. Uh, uh, yeah. So many people think you fake it too, but you've been doing it since day one. I've been doing it before day one. <laughs> <laughs> and then I I met your mom on New Year's Eve, and she she doesn't talk like you, but she does talk a little different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she does have his a whole family does. His dad ta- like you've met his dad, right? No. Well, oh. I shook his hand at. He had to go, but like I kind of yeah. said hi once, but he he also has a very unique way of talking. <laughs> really? So yeah, yeah. It, it runs in the family. But your yeah. mom uses real words. Oh, <laughs> so does his dad. They both do. Yeah, they, they just have do. a different t- like uh, just kind yeah. of a unique cadence and and yeah. pitch to their to their voice. Yeah. She's but, really nice though. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. glad. What yeah. are your New Year's goals? Um, you know. I have a couple New Year's resolutions. I want to start building more involved projects. That, well, we're already doing that. Yeah, we're building more involved projects that use more thought to craft them. I don't really want to build things that are, like, drank anymore. Like, <laughs> I've spent a lot of the time on the channel building things that are, like, don't function very well or, like, don't work very well. And I just decided that I want to take a little more time and a little more thought and everything I make, and mm-hmm. still make it weird and fast, and all the things that I like building things as, but I just want to take a little more time and craft them a little bit better. Nice. That's one of my goals. That's a good That's a good one. Yeah, I've already started on my other goal. I just want to be more responsible. You know, this is my responsibility mustache. It's going <laughs> to grow as I get more responsible. The mustache of responsibility. Oh, it's like yeah. a training braid. So if you do something very irresponsible, I'll have to shave it off. Yeah. <laughs> if I come to work and it's all the way gone, not like oh, a little no. patchy, you guys know. You already know <laughs> something, something went down. Happened. But yeah, I've already started to be more responsible, not get tickets. That's not true. And you've, you've been showing up here like a early, few minutes early every day. Every single which day. Is, which is, uh, mm-hmm. you know. Yep, Very different. Because I used to show up willy nilly style. Yeah, like, so. yeah. It was like 12, 11. 1, <laughs> yeah. 8. 10, 11, uh, 8. You never showed up at 8 no, before? No, I was saying 8 at oh, night. Oh, 8 p.m. <laughs> well, that was the, that was the, the day you I got, got arrested, arrested on the way to work. So <laughs> that's true. You did show up at like yeah. but seven I just, or 8. Yeah. I, I want to be more responsible. I want to build better projects. And I just want to, yeah, grow as a person. So. Nice. Nice. Do mm-hmm. you have any personal ones or is that? Well, well I mean, the my whole like both. life is kind of grind hard. Like I go to work and then go home, and but yeah, and so then look up ideas for combining. Think about building together. things, just like how Ethan said. Yeah. Like I'm always thinking about building things. Like even when I go on vacation, I'm just like, that's what I want to do. But yeah. uh, I guess a personal goal that I've started to achieve: I've sold all my Subarus except for one. Really, uh, one Subaru. Wow. Yep. And I want to really focus on like building quality street cars and stuff and just, you know, making everything in my life just a little more premium. <laughs> yeah, just like one car that you put all your attention into. Yeah, all into. my attention into. And yeah. yeah, I also want to start saving for a house. So Nice. Yeah. Wow. Gonna, that's that's a huge uh, your your mustache of responsibility is working because yeah, I know. <laughs> like I 3 you, months man. ago you were like I'm saving for a GTR. I'm going to yeah. import a GTR. So those funds have been allocated. reallocated. Yeah, yeah, to nice. other stuff. So. That's a well. That's the way that I always thought of it because I really wanted a GTR before I had a house, mm-hmm. and I was like, you need a garage that you own before you get a GTR. I think the way that I thought of it was a little different. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you can live in the GTR. Yeah, you but can't see, drive your house. <laughs> <laughs> but when you live in your car, you ruin it, and you don't want to ruin something. Yeah, nice yeah exactly. Car. Like your so. Subarus turned into a trash pile when you were living yeah, in them. Yeah, because you just you know you, you live, live in your car, and then yeah. But I learned how to live in a tiny little space. So <laughs> the back of STI uh, is not big, man. I get having like a small house and a big garage. Yeah, <laughs> look uh, at me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Seven hundred square foot house, yeah. eighteen hundred square foot garage. See, if you got a GTR, it'd be very responsible. But I don't think you want one. Well, mm. not really. But I mean, of the cars that one could get, it's definitely higher on the list than most that I would want. But uh, I still wouldn't. 
actually have a place to keep it because this shop is always full of projects. The yeah. other one leaks and is also full of projects. So yeah. I'd have to build a whole new one. <laughs> yeah. And I but. can hardly have room for my three little electric dirt bikes in my garage. It's <laughs> yeah. kind of it's like more merch. of a she shed. It's half. A, well, it's a, a she shed. Is. It's a single car. Yeah. yeah. It's a single car garage that was cut in half. Yeah. And well, more than half. It's like right. the 10% <laughs> yeah. nubbin of it is the only thing left. Yeah. It's like a yeah. quarter of it at most. Yeah. Was your garage like that before you moved? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. They had, uh, their son was a drummer, so oh. they converted the garage so he could drum. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. So half of it was like a studio. Interesting. Yeah. And it's like drywalled and everything. Yeah. It's like very it would be so much work for me to turn that back into a garage. Yeah. And that's where we do all the grind hard merch now. So it works out because the extra layer of drywall and insulation is yeah. pretty nice for packing merch. Do you, do you think once you build that shop you've been talking about in town for the merch, do you mm -hmm. think you'd convert that back to a garage then maybe? Because then you could actually park your car at your house. My wife wants to turn it into a library. And oh. I want to turn it into a gaming room. So oh. I think we'll find some kind of compromise. I see. But not turn it into an actual garage. No. Well, if that tree next to your house mysteriously dies, you can just build a garage in the backyard. I'm waiting on it. Mysteriously <laughs> dies. I, Ethan's out there with an <laughs> axe. <laughs> no, that's not mysterious. Oh, that's yeah. obvious. No, one of these <laughs> one of these days, a big windstorm is going to come through and we're going to be able to build a garage back there. Yeah. But, yeah. No, but if if I did want to build some kind of tuner car, then I'd have space in the garage in town for it. Yeah. So no, I just meant like as a place yeah. to park. Cause like if it you had nice. that nice car, you'd want to park it inside when yeah. you park it at home, which you'd want to do. It'd be annoying to have it yeah. halfway across town. Yeah. I think but. my kind of nice car well, would be <laughs> one that like works twice a year anyways. So it'd mainly just be sitting in the garage away from my house. I mean, that's kind so, of all of us. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Steven's, Steven's idea of a nice car is like a very swindly Damaged chopper. car. No, yeah. a very swindly um, chopper. The swindlier, yeah. the better. Yeah. yeah. Steven doesn't really care about cars so much, yeah. but yeah. he's really yeah. into choppers right now. I would get a Supra yeah. though. I like Supra. Oh yeah, Supras mm -hmm. are pretty sweet. Yeah. yeah. Wow. See, I'd get a FD, and I would get one that's like so modified already that it would never work. Yeah, yeah, it would just you would literally drive it down the block, and the dude would have you already give him the cash, and it would yeah. blow up uh -huh. immediately. I think I'm probably with Will on on a GTR, yeah. but I'd have to think to be sure. But like, if All we're talking, drive. if we're talking, like we're in the category of of like. I don't know, Japanese car, cars right now because, like, there yeah. are different categories and they, yeah. they yeah. have different reasons. But I think if None we're talking... the other ones matter to me. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> There's certain ones, like, like I don't care about, <laughs> like, say, a new-ish uh, Porsche, like a 911 or anything. Uh -huh. But oh, I do really like the 944s and, like, having a, a 944 Turbo would be a really fun car. And they're not actually very expensive. I mean, they are compared to Relatively some things. But, like, to what they are, you can yeah. get one that's decent for, like, 10 grand even, yeah. you know? So, like... And no. they're nice. They, and they I look nice. I'm, <laughs> Yours I like, was nice. <laughs> what? Your 944 was really nice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so yeah. was mine. Did you yeah. turn it on with an actual light switch? Yeah, mine had a house light switch in it. Wait, oh, what? no. I never yeah. saw that. But it had, it, it looked nice from the outside from like five feet away. It had like blue racing stripes on it and like a candy, like sparkly paint job. But mm -hmm. in the inside, those cars, it's just the it, European car thing. Like they just, fall apart the interior the is pretty like bad especially the because you had the terrible. earlier generation interior which was even, the I mean, worst the one that i had slash have in the junkyard is mm -hmm. the slightly later but the dash is all still cracked up yeah they like, crack it's the break yeah. yeah. but what always gets the beamers too. yeah yeah the thing is though like i i know myself well enough at this point to know that i can't really keep anything nice unless i don't <laughs> use it yeah and so that's why like I don't have any, I mean, one of the reasons why I don't really have any interest in having like a GTR or a Lamborghini or any of those fancy cars, because I wouldn't be able to drive it without like at least slightly damaging it. Whereas, and I wouldn't want to do that. Like I, there's no value to me in having a car that's too nice to actually drive. Yeah. Whereas like a $10,000 $10, Porsche, like I'd still try to keep it nice, but if I, you know, inevitably, when I inevitably damaged it by having too much fun with it, I wouldn't feel like I'd you know, wasted half my life savings or destroyed a priceless relic, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just not a good place to have a nice car, to be honest. In Idaho? Well, even that's if why I... everyone around here has Subarus, because yeah. it's like the illusion of speed and like you can drive it year round. <laughs> Will looks so <laughs> offended right there. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are your New Year's goals, Steven? Well, as far as Grindhard goes, just getting better shots and 
those new lenses have been awesome. You'll see when you start editing the new videos, how mm-hmm. much cool B roll we've been able to get with like the 100 to 400, mm-hmm. all that stuff. Just, yeah, I don't know, like being more creative on like the filming side of all of that. Um, yeah. And outside of grind hard, I don't know. I haven't really nailed anything down yet, but just, just try January. Just try, try the responsibility <laughs> mustache out like will <laughs> mustache. Of, I think we yeah. should like implement this, you know, the like push up thing. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the mustache of responsibility. Mustache. If you do something like super irresponsible, yeah. like if you don't complete dry January, you have to shave your mustache. Oh no, I, I couldn't do that. I was born with this mustache. <laughs> what if we make you do it? We just hold you down and <laughs> shave oh, your no. mustache off. How about a responsibility mohawk? Mm. That's the opposite. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds like you get to get a mohawk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's, that's not really a consequence. No, because I always think about mohawks as like the swindly thing to do. But you know, like before you shave your head, you get a mohawk, but then I have to keep it until I'm responsible again. Yeah, that's yeah. what but I you mean. would like it is what I'm You'd saying. enjoy it. That's it has uh, to be a real uh, consequence. You check out my sick mohawk. See, man. us us shaving off your mustache would be a real consequence. That's, that's why true. it works. That's true. That'd change your life. I've never seen Steven without a mustache. I feel like I'm a little uncomfortable. There's with only that. a few people who ever had man. Uh, I've oh. seen, they said never again. Uh, <laughs> I've seen I've seen him with like when I met him, he was young enough to not really have a mustache, yeah. just a little bit of fuzzies. Yeah, it looked pretty um, bad. Will's got a good head No, you start. just look like you were 16 because oh, you were. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You'll have that. I don't think anyone, at least, like, no one just looks good that age. Just That's like, true. Their bodies are just like, I'm a different person now. <laughs> but this is this weird transitionary phase between yeah. what I used to be and what I'm going to be. Yeah, it's true. I don't know. I see teenagers now, and I'm like, what the heck? I didn't look like that <laughs> when well, I was 17. I think, no, they, tr- did, I think though. they try a lot harder, though. Oh, uh, yeah, true. I was just in sweatpants. I didn't give no, a he's, crap. No, he's saying that they look better than we did, like oh. teenagers now. And I I would they tend to have agree. Like, swag. I think people try a lot harder. Like, I think, I think uh, like, the generation younger than Will's, mm-hmm. like even or and oh. Will's generation, like they're Probably like Instagram. looking nice is actually more of a, especially for guys. I mean, for girls, like looking nice has always been a thing. But um, I think I think it seems I to me anyway, that. like uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but it's probably I mean, Instagram. Like you need to get your numbers up. You yeah, know? yeah. You, you gotta need gotta to look like, yeah. look good by the pool, even if you're like 15. <laughs> like kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's kind of weird when you yeah. say it like that. Well, it's like all those. <laughs> no, it's all those memes, dude. <laughs> Have you seen them? It's like me when I was like a kid or whatever, and you're like wearing a bunch of weird crap and like singing your song yeah. and like filming with like a VHS camera Mm -hmm. and then it's like the new generation. It's like everyone all like dressed up, like dancing all like actually dancing, like filmed with like a real camera. Yeah. (laughs) And it's like, that is a whole different thing. It is. But maybe, I mean, you know, if you're a dude in sweatpants, you got to turn it up a little bit. Yeah. I guess so. It's like (laughs) competition spheres (laughs) out there. So <laughs> back to Steven's, Steven's goals. I don't think it's like a new year's thing, but you have been talking about wanting to build a chopper and like learn more about mm-hmm. building stuff too. So that's, yeah, that'll probably happen this year. Yeah. Yeah. I need to get back on Facebook. So Let's just say that join will happen because that means it has a 50% chance of happening. If you say it will probably happen, we have a hundred percent chance that it will not happen. Okay. It year. will happen. We'll it's go true. To the 50% it's odds. true. Steven's yeah. somebody there that if he go. says probably, it means it very not. unlikely. Yeah. If he says maybe it means no. Mm-hmm. And if he says yes, it's like a 90%. Well, you need a riding companion to take the chopper to Sturgis. So. <laughs> right. <The> monster <laughs> chopper. <laughs> yep. How far do you think you could ride that thing without like wanting to die? I honestly have no idea. Like the <laughs> the test the test roll down the hill the other day was fairly uninspiring. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, well, um, but I also know you guys why. Are gonna be surprised when you see yeah. the next chopper video. <laughs> I also know <laughs> all of the reasons why it was that way, and and I think I know how to make it better. So, mm. but but until it's running and driving, and I, like I have no idea. It might be the kind of thing that's like a huge difficulty and practice and workout to even be able to ride it. Like. 10 miles. Mm-hmm. Um, that said on the pavement, it's going to be much easier. Like I, yeah. that's a certainty that on smooth terrain, it'll be, but it may be the kind of thing where you can't really go around corners very fast because like, aside from all the weird geometries and weight and balance of it, also you just have the fact of like, that's a 200 pound tire. That's 46 inches, inches in diameter spinning really fast. That's a gyroscope. It yeah. really, really, yeah. really doesn't want to change direction. Yeah. I don't want to be straight. So <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, it may be the thing, like, at lower speeds, it'll definitely be drivable, but it might be the kind of thing where you get up to, like, 
40, 50 miles an hour, and you just can't straight. go around a corner. I don't know. Like, <laughs> Is that why dirt bike front tires are 21 inches and supermotos are like 1917? No, I think that's more about um, one, supermotos don't have to roll over bumps, so you don't need as big of a tire. Oh. And two, if you're taking a dirt bike and then using it for supermoto, yeah. um, what you're doing by putting a smaller front tire on it is changing the rake, the angle of the forks, oh. which makes the steering quicker and um, more responsive for, for driving on pavement. Okay. Cause, cause dirt bikes are made, are, are set up with rake and geometry for stability. I mean, they also need to be nimble, but you're not going very fast. So nimble at slow speeds, you want it to feel pretty stable and not, uh, and you know, not be too affected by bumps and stuff. Whereas a, a bike that's on the street, you kind of want the opposite of that. You want it to be very nimble, even at higher speeds. And the faster you go, you know, mm, the, the more yeah. stable it yeah. tends to get. So like anyway, MotoGP bikes, like the tires are, I mean, they're wide, but they're small yeah. in diameter. And, and, but those bikes are built from the start with yeah. that in mind. So they don't need to put a smaller than original tire on the front because yeah. they're just built with the right geometry yeah. to begin with. And they're, but I the mean, gyroscopic s- effect is something fun to think about. Yeah. Like in that yeah, I didn't tire right. size really. thing. Yeah. yeah and and on, a, on a bike, on a regular bike, like it's there, it's an effect and it helps you be stable at speed, but your tires and wheels are so much smaller and lighter. Like the tire mm. is barely bigger than that yeah. wheel. And your body weight, like yep. on as a, a cross percentage, rocket, you can just lean yep. in so easy, even if it had bigger tires, like, yeah, but these outweigh you each, each tire. Yeah. And, and not only <laughs> that, but, uh, all normal sport bikes, your center of gravity is way higher. All, all bikes, every bike. Oh, this is so the only bike ever to lean. You're getting it. Yeah. You have way more influence on it, regardless of your percentage of body weight to the vehicle's weight, which is also way higher. Mm-hmm. Um, but your, your, your center of gravity is higher. So it's just much easier to affect it. And, and in some ways that'll be a really good thing with the chopper because it won't want to fall over. Yeah. But in other ways it might be way too stable. Yeah. So it's all, you know, it's all a mystery. It's just, it's an experiment. And if it's barely rideable, that's okay. Because yeah. it's, it looks cool. It's, it looks yeah, cool. it's, it's more of a piece of art about motorcycles yeah. than it is a functional thing. Which I want it to be as functional as possible. Is. Yeah, right. Yeah. Every chopper out there is art that's telling a story about motorcycles. And that story is not performance. No. <laughs> it never has been and it never will be for choppers. The story yeah. is looking really cool because that's what bikes are for. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I'm building this the way I am. And, and if it's, it's going to be rideable to some extent and I want it to be the best that it can be. But at the end of the day, if it's essentially a piece of art conversation starter, then it's going to do really good at that. It already is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So well, what are your goals for the year besides getting that bad boy running? Um, I don't know. I haven't really thought about goals as such, but, um, things that I uh, like, I'd really like to work on the fire truck this year, um, and do something with Humvees. Those are two major things. Mm -hmm. Um, aside from that, finish up some more stuff on the shop, like get the bathroom working and, um, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's not really goals. That's just things that I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, put, put siding on my house. That's a good goal for this. Year. <laughs> oh man. The people are going to be, I get messages on my personal Instagram about the siding on your house. People are like, dude, does Ethan need help? Side his <laughs> well, that's the problem huh? is that I don't want. Yeah, help. I know. I say that every time. I mean, he doesn't want help. Uh, that's I mean, point. I would take help from like my friends yeah. that I know and trust, but like, Not I don't like know. Some I'm just, random like, contract yeah, or something. Just, something yeah. I like building things myself. Like, I don't really get a whole lot of satisfaction about having yeah. things if I can't also have built them. Well, and you can also make it a lot nicer than the general contractor yeah. would. Right. And I want to mill the mill. Like originally I was going to do metal, but after doing this thing with metal siding, I, I've got really uh, tired. The metal that, around so. all those weird windows and yeah, stuff. Would be be hard. So really mm, hard. I think I want to mill my own siding for it. Cause oh, nice. I have that ability and, and stuff. So I want to, you know, get some cedar trees and uh, mill them up and, you know, that's something that nobody else can do. So that's why it's yeah. been unsighted for six years because <laughs> priorities you know yeah. <laughs> priorities, priorities. But, yeah um yeah i don't know other than that just continue to level up on you know skill and building and stuff and uh you know try to be less of a curmudgeon generally uh, you know as a personal goal <laughs> <laughs> nice um nice. but yeah i don't know that's that's pretty much it i don't really like new year's resolutions as such because yeah. i feel like they're like it's like, I'm going to do this thing. And you always set yourself a goal that's like f- very fixed and yeah. rigid. And then as soon as you 
fail on that extremely fixed and rigid thing, then yeah. you just give up. You're like, eh, eh, I didn't do it. You know, like dry, dry January, right? Like I'm not saying Steven's, yeah. you know, inherently going to fail at that or something, but like- Well, he already has. I know, I know. I'm, not, I'm saying I'm not picking on Steven. It'll it's have just, to bleed into February is how it's going. <laughs> okay. It's just an example because like, if you're like, I'm not going to drink at all for the month of January. And then one day you're at a bar restaurant and with your friends and you have a beer. You're like, well, now I failed at my goal, so I'm not going to do it at all. Whereas if you set yourself a vague general concept and you say, you know what? I'm going to try to drink less or I'm going to try to be less of a curmudgeon. Then if you fail, you don't feel like you entirely failed and you get, and you, and you missed your point. You can mm -hmm. just be like, oh, well today I didn't do as well, but tomorrow I'll do better. You know, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So. I think a big problem with new year's goals too, is like the, I will do this by the end of the year. Yeah. yeah. Cause it's like, and then if you don't, yeah. you failed, right? Like, and yeah. that's, you don't want to feel like you failed. Yeah, Cause like the last three years I haven't made a movie and I've wanted to make a movie. Right. But I just like, there's just kind of like energy and conversation going around about goal setting. Right. And then like towards the end of the year, I was like, what do you want to do this year? What do you want to do this year? What do you want to do this year? And I'm like, okay. I just like bought the movie camera that right. night. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't even really talk to you guys. I was like, hey, guys, I bought a movie camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're yep. making a movie. I'm excited to learn you how know. to use that thing. Yeah, it's super yeah. premium looking. It We're going to have to try to keep it nice, though. That's what I was worried about. So you guys want to do like your 100-mile challenge movie type situation. Mm -hmm. Would that camera be in the same shape yeah. as the jank? Oh, no. no. That camera is not going not on the on next those challenges. Okay. Okay. No, 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 no. 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 It's, it's too dangerous on a hundred mile challenge to take such. <laughs> I mean, we should get it a hard that. case for yeah. sure, yeah, regardless, because sure. we're always going to be filming things that are yeah. you know, mildly sketchy. And it's pretty strong and stuff. Is this screen is like the main thing we'll have to like kind of baby. Yeah, but it even has like little shields and it has a screen protector already, but that falls off already. <laughs> well, now it kind of stayed. I don't oh, okay. know. But I was even thinking like maybe until we get a hard case, I'll just keep it at my house. Because, yeah, like, that might we be. don't need to use it every day. Like, no. I want to get some test stuff today and then bring it in and see what it's like. Because right. apparently ISO isn't a real thing. But <laughs> that might be a little too technical for this podcast. ISO is a lie. It's all a lie, man. All the cake lie. is a lie. Yeah. I couldn't believe. That's still one of my favorite video games of all time. Portal? Portal. Yeah. Both of them. Portal and Portal 2. Yeah. I've never played those games. You like them well. it's Are you busy tonight after work? <laughs> <laughs> you can Not play for, Portal One in one afternoon for sure. Really? Yeah. yeah. The whole beat the whole game. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Dang. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Her I story. always see them on advertisements on my Xbox, but I never. I have it. I have. I don't know if I have one, but I have two on my oh. Xbox. So one of the is two the co-op yeah. one or is yep. there? Yeah, a you can play co-op. Oh, yeah. Okay. Both. Yeah. Yeah. Really Both. nice. It's Good just game. like one of those things that's like a piece of art that's made because someone wanted to make it. Yeah. Like you're not trying to please anybody. You're not trying to like, like you're just making the art that you want to exist. Mm -hmm. That is like portal. And it, it's, it's still so different from any other video game. That's like lately. I just feel like every game I play feels the same. No matter what shoot. it's, <laughs> It, or even like even if it's a different like yeah they all just start to feel the same you're just like oh look another side quest whatever portal portal was was and still is just completely unlike any other video game and then also yeah. like the humor in it is excellent <laughs> like the the computers and stuff and all their their ai humor and like and the art style and the, the art dialogue. yeah like and all like of the it. easter eggs there's a lot of yeah. little gems yeah like the there. cake is a lie you yep. know like yeah <laughs> Like, yeah, like all these things that because I see some Easter eggs in modern games, even like Starfield and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's like you can tell, like, oh, this could have been something. Like I'm on the Starfield Reddit, and people always <laughs> post. Like, of course, you are. <laughs> there's these whiteboards. Like you'll go into a scientist lab, and there's these whiteboards, and I'm like, oh, this equation must mean something funny. So like, I'll screenshot it, put it on Reddit, and they're like, yeah, I mean, it kind of has to do with rockets, but it doesn't really belong together. It's like, oh, such an opportunity. If you're going to make yeah. that art, like fill it up with art. Right. You yeah. know, like little yeah. fun things, even if it doesn't progress you through the game. Yeah. Like I feel like Skyrim even had more of that. That was yeah. my biggest quarrel with Starfield is they had such a good opportunity. It's a good game engine. Mm -hmm. If they had made it smaller and packed it more full of like little funny things and Easter eggs and stuff like that. Yeah, there's I not think, enough humor in that yeah, game. It would have hit better, I think, yeah. if it did that. Yeah. It's kind of like similar in Skyrim too, where like kind of everyone has the same attitude. 
Yeah. Like, they all don't want to be bothered. They all are kind of griping about their job or whatever. It's like, I like playing a game where there's like a bunch of different personalities like oh you meet this really quirky fun character like borderlands is really Dude, good at i that. was gonna say yeah. that borderlands is so good uh-huh the characters you meet in borderlands like they have different like some of them are kind of like oh rough and tough and da, 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 don't bother me <laughs> yeah and then some of them are just like hey like want to hang out let's do <laughs> like, like you know like you just ran into will in a video <laughs> game yeah <laughs> and one of them's like a psychotic 13 year old girl who's kind of also a bunny rabbit and like blows everything up you know yeah like <laughs> that's so much more fun yeah it's like i think maybe just that's a missing part it's just yeah. the fun part and i think that's why things like fortnite do, does so well it's mm. like oh you want to be spider-man and like dance Gongam style with your friends every time you get a kill. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. okay, let's give you the ability to do that. Right. You know? Yeah. And like all these games within the game can come up when you're yep. doing that. Like all yeah. these Fortnite streamers have like a thing that they do, their thing. Right. They're playing a game within the game. And then it just is so much more fun that way. But like if you're not doing couch play, like co- co-op, co-op that you can yep, do together yep. split screen that's like the best gaming yeah. experience and that's so lacking no one away. does that yeah. no one does it that it's was the crazy. thing when i was a kid yeah. every game had split screen i know awesome and i've and never talked to anybody that that thinks that that isn't good right yeah, yeah. everybody Everyone who's ever it. played video games wants that and no yeah. one's making games like that it must just be hard to develop yeah i mean i'm sure it is like, and yeah. they they know yeah. they don't really have to because you can do online multiplayer and yeah it's just not the but, same man that's yeah. what's so gangster about halo mm, yeah but, i never played halo with well i guess i did in college but halo when i first do when halo 2 best. co-op and you'll yeah. be like nice i mean i played a lot of halo what <laughs> i was gonna say is when i played halo i would like i played halo one but i was totally by myself the whole time mm. yeah. i played some halo like not co-op campaign stuff just like you know death matches and stuff with with uh, my friends in college but yeah um but yeah like that the 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 art and the humor and stuff is what's so lacking in so many games is like the side quests in like starfield for example Every one, you're like, oh, look, another side quest. And, like, it's, I haven't, I haven't, like, when I I was playing it while I was in Texas, and I didn't really do many of the side quests because they just were really obvious. It was like this person comes up and talks to you about something, and they're like, I need help with this thing. And you know immediately what's going to happen on the side quest. You're going to go, yeah. and not all of them. And really, though, there's some that take you on a <laughs> wild adventure. I'm sure they do, and I'm not, I haven't done them all. I'm just comparing it to, like, how yeah. it makes me feel, or, like, what yeah. I feel, right? Like, I'm not, I'm not, like, I'm sure there are good ones, but mm-hmm. for f- comparison, Borderlands, like every single side quest I play, did immediately because I knew it was going to be really entertaining and funny. Yeah. Even if it was a basic like, hey, go retrieve this thing for me. Yeah. The characters were funny. Like what happens is funny. Like, and visually it's, I don't know. It was yeah. just, it's just a different feel, you know? But. That's one thing like when the AI chats and voices first started coming out, I was mm. like, wow, video games are going to get so much better better because you could like talk to anyone and have a different experience and they could have their own voice and backstory and it would seeming i don't know how it would work technically but it seems like it'd be easier to program mm-hmm. and now i'm kind of thinking like oh no it's going to be so monotonous and you have to go yeah. through so many to get a good one because none of them were actually made by a real human right i'm like humans are already having a hard time adding human Humanity Human, humanness, into video yeah. Games, yeah, right. You know, because it's like the jokes in Portal, like Portal One. Maybe there's only a handful, like a couple Easter eggs, a couple yep. really good jokes, but it's just an absolute joy the whole time. Yeah, and it's just that's humanity in the game, right? And which is even better, a game about robots. Yeah, but then like <laughs> if there's like because like you think of how Chat GPT responds to your queries, it's like very technical, very. And if you say be funny, and they're like. Oh, huh, huh, yeah. <laughs> this is your answer to your question, huh? It yeah, is like it's not like a terrible clever. dad joke. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like yeah. just regurgitated stuff. So it's like yep. I don't know, but well, well it's and that's like he's getting cold. So maybe that podcast is coming to an end. No, I'm fine. My knees are a little cold, but it's you just look like you're like under. shaking. Over no, the fire I'm probably fine. does need yeah. a few logs over there. So we'll close out with the wise words of Will, like we always do. Hmm. Here's some really wise words that I've been experiencing. So I'm going to take care of this this weekend. But um, 
don't try to drive around on summer tires, bald summer tires in the snow. In a Honda Civic? Yeah. It's not good. <laughs> it's not premium. <laughs> it just snowed this morning. These are some, like, real-life advice from Will. Get yourself some snow tires because the storm's coming. Mm. I saw a meme on Facebook that said uh, – it was on one of the Sandpoint groups. It was like, all right, if it's your first time living I've in seen Idaho, that. <laughs> all weather tires are not snow weather. I, yeah, I've seen I that. Yeah. And all I seasons just are not snow tires. I don't want to be that guy that like goes in the ditch and then they look at my tires and they're bald summer yeah, tires and they're like, like mm. you must not be from around here. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. no, no. You're like, I literally grew up in a house that's completely yeah. off grid. I yeah, just man. am actually dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, he doesn't remember the name of the road that he's lived most of his life on. So yeah, so, you know, Will's brain does work a little bit differently. Uh, <laughs> really? I mean, it's not you weren't here for that information. No, I missed that. He was one. telling me a story and he was like, I was out on the road. I was like, which road? He's like, it's cross like, mountain. Road. He's like, no, it's not the part you were telling the story about. It's not. Oh yeah. Well, I, no, I mean, you did yeah. live on cross mountain, I but did, I'm talking yeah. about, uh, yeah, I'm talking about the road that you'd anyway. Yeah. I was like, which, which road? And he's like, like the main one to get to your house. And I was like, you mean like, the paved one or and he's like no the dirt one I'm like wait you don't remember the name of it <laughs> they like, just grew meld up here. together they meld together you know i know the names but like i don't know where the road starts like where the journey starts yeah. on that road so, i uh, get you you'll you'll have that yeah. it's a it's a bigger <laughs> job it is a bigger <laughs> job all yeah. right so anyway, yeah get snow tires get snow tires that is the set and bent podcast it's available wherever you listen to podcasts and comes out every Monday. So let's awesome. have a good year. Let's have a good year. Nice. Nice.